Okay, in this video we're going to look at servo motor control and we're going to use this little RC servo here. So right now the servo motor is at its mid-range of travel which we'll call zero degrees and with the keyboard I can move it counterclockwise to its minus 90 degree position or I could cause it to move clockwise back to its zero degree position and continue on to its plus 90 degree position. So this servo has a range of motion of 180 degrees. Now some servos only have a range of motion of 90 degrees and other servos have a range of 360 degrees which is continuous rotation. So how do we make this servo work? Well if you look at the cable going into the servo motor you'll see three wires. There's a black and a red which is its power. So the red is plus 5 volts and the black is ground and the white wire is the control wire. So how do we drive the control wire to make the servo move? That's what we're going to look at in this video. Okay, now we're going to look at how to drive the control line of the servo motor. Basically we send 5 volt pulses every 20 milliseconds continuously and that works out to a frequency of 50 Hertz but the pulse width is what actually controls the position of the servo. So if we send out a pulse width of one millisecond, our servo will rotate to its minus 90 degree position. If we send out a pulse of one and a half milliseconds, the servo will center itself at its zero degree position. And if we send out a pulse of two milliseconds, the servo will rotate to its plus 90 degree position. Now these timing values are textbook, and in the real world you'll find different values. In my case, my servo range was from a half a millisecond to over two milliseconds. Now to generate these pulses, you can use an Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano, or any microcontroller of your choice. Okay, here we can see the voltage pulses on the control line to the servo motor that happen every 20 milliseconds. Now if I zoom in on one of these pulses, you can see that it's over two milliseconds long in duration which will put the servo motor into its plus 90 degree position. That will be all the way over to the right clockwise. Now if I take the pulse width down, if I narrow it down with the keyboard and bring it down to about a half a millisecond, that will bring the, the servo motor to its minus 90 degree position. That will be all the way over counterclockwise. Now if I bump it up to about one and a half milliseconds, that will bring it to its zero degree center position. Now the same control pulses used to drive a servo motor can also be used to control a DC brushless motor by sending those control pulses into the ESC, the electronic speed control, of the brushless motor, as I'll demonstrate. Okay, I have set up a modified open loop servo, which is a continuously run motor. And right now I'm feeding it one and a half millisecond pulses, so it's in its zero degree position. And that's its stop mode. Now if I increase the pulse width greater than one and a half milliseconds, the servo motor will turn clockwise. And if I decrease the pulse width less than one and a half milliseconds, the servo will turn counterclockwise. And I'll show you that. So I'll start decreasing, and you can see it starting to move counterclockwise. And the further I go down, the faster it gets. So I'll bring it back up to the stop mode, and then increase it greater than one and a half milliseconds. There's our stop mode. Now we're going clockwise. So this little servo can be used to drive wheels of a little robot project. So how do we generate pulses to drive our servo motor with a microcontroller? Now in my case I'm using the ATmega 328P which is in Arduino Nano. So I'll be using timer number one. Now timer number one is a 16-bit counter. So it counts up to 65,535 and then rolls over and goes back down to zero and continues over and over again. So we'll take our 16 megahertz clock. We'll divide it by 64 through a prescaler to give a 250 kilohertz clock into our counter. So our counter will count from 0 to 65,535 and it will roll over to 0 and continue counting again. 
and that will give us a period of 262 milliseconds. Now we are looking for a period of 20 milliseconds for our servo motor, so we'll, we'll have to cut down that top value to a lower value. So if we divide 250 kilohertz divided by 50 hertz, which is a 20 millisecond period, we'll get a count of 5,000. So if we count up from 0 to 5,000, we'll get a proper 20 millisecond period. So if we load 4,999 into ICR1, our input capture register, now the counter will count from 0 to 4,999, which will give us 5,000 counts, and it will roll over to 0 and continue counting again. And that will give us a 20 millisecond period. Now every time the counter reaches its top count of 4,999 and rolls over to 0, the GPI pin on the Arduino Nano, number 9, will raise up to 5 volts. Now it will stay at 5 volts until the counter value matches the value entered into the OCR1 output compare register. And in this case that value is 97. So a value of 97 will give us a pulse width that will bring our servo motor into the minus 90 degree position. Now I've calculated other values. Here you see 316 will give us a pulse width to bring our servo motor into its neutral zero degree position. And with a value of 535, we'll get a pulse width that will drive our servo motor into the plus 90 degree position. So that's 535 count times 4 microseconds will give us our pulse width. So all we have to do in our code is to load a value between 97 and 535 into the OCR1 uh, register, the output compare register, and that could drive our servo motor from our one, one extreme, minus 90 degrees, to the other extreme, plus 90 degrees. And that's how we drive our servo motor with a microcontroller. So I have a little program running that's showing the output compare register, OCR1, values on the screen. And as I change them with, uh, with the keyboard, you can see how it affects the servo motor. So right now, we're at 97, which is at the low end. And as we go up, all the way up to the top end, which will top out at 535, won't go any higher. And if I come back down to the bottom end, 97, and it won't go below 97. So I could go in between 97 and 535, and I could actually monitor the values in OCR1 register.